Good morning, bimblers. And you join me in a wine, or as we call it in England, chirk. We were supposed to be doing Morris's Manchester, the third edition today. But it's my birthday on Monday, and I wanted to go somewhere green. We did think about going to Shrewsbury, but I'm fed up of riding my bike round town centres. So we've come to chirk, or a wine, so we can go down the Clangocklan Canal. So let's stop messing about. And let's bimble. Being that it's my big birthday bimble, I couldn't not stop at the church, could I bimblers? This is St Mary's Church here in Chirk. It's a Norman church with its big square tower. However, the original saint it was dedicated to suggests that it goes back much further than the Normans and William the Conqueror and all his Frenchy mates. It used to be dedicated to Saint Tassilio. He was a Welsh bishop that died in 640 AD. He has a small village named after him, Clan Tassilio. That's just a bit further than Clan Gocklin, which is where we're off today. Clan Tassilio gets itself shoved in that big long Welsh place name, you know, the one in Anglesey. Lamfair, umpar, umpar, stick it up your jumpar. Clan Tassilio, go, go, goch. I'll learn how to say that one of these days. I believe that it's St Mary's Church or St Tassilio's Church that gives Chirk its name. The more favoured explanation is that it's an English interpretation of the river Kerryog. But I'm not hearing that. Kerryog, Chirk, they don't really sound very similar, do they? Usually when the English try and translate a Welsh place name, it at least sounds similar. You have Abermau, which becomes Barmouth. Bermau, Barmouth. But Chirk and Kerryog don't sound similar at all. I think it's the old Welsh name for Chirk, a wine or Egg Lewis a wine, which is more of a clue. Egg Lewis a wine means church on the moor. And church in Anglo Saxon is Kirk. Some people believe that's where we get the word church from. Church, Kirk, Kirk, Church, Church, Chirk. That's my two pennants. Let's spend more. Between the light to capture, but only show in pictures so miles. Over time, clouds kept the light from those eyes. Still, love grown comes and you know I'll never let it go. And so, bimblers, we reach Chirk Viaduct and Chirk Aqueduct. We'll save talking about the aqueduct for later on when we talk about the Clangocklan Canal. Spoiler alert, there's another aqueduct coming. Chirk Viaduct was designed by a fellow we would have spoke about had we gone to Shrewsbury. He was actually the MP for Shrewsbury, twice. A fellow by the name of Henry Robertson. Not only was he the Member of Parliament for Shrewsbury, but he was also a noted and prolific railway builder. He built the Chester to Shrewsbury Railway, the one that goes over Chirk Viaduct. According to my big book of Bimble, he also designed the North Wales Mineral Railway, the Ballerin Festiniog Railway, two railways from Clangocklan, 
which is where we're off today, the Central Wales Railway, the Wirral Railway, and the Wrexham Mould and Connors Quay Railway. He also owned an ironworks called the Brimbo Steel Works, which would account for his love of the railways, for shifting round big bits of metal, or for securing contracts to build big bits of metal. He actually joined a locomotive company with a Charles Bayer and a Richard Peacock. That was Bayer, Peacock and Company. Henry Robinson was the company. He actually bailed out the other two in 1854 with a £4,000 loan. That's about £350,000 in today's money. Henry Robinson obviously thought a lot about Charles Bayer because he named his son after him, Henry Bayer Robertson. Henry Bayer Robertson became Sir Henry Bayer Robertson in his father's honour. Henry Robinson Senior finished the work that the Ellesmere Canal started 50 years prior. More on that as we go. But for now, it's time to get medieval. Let's bimble. To relocate right from the break to the start. Well, Bimblers, you're probably thinking to yourself, he's reached a new low. He's brought us to see a mound of dirt. Well, it's a medieval mound of dirt. It's called Offa's Dyke. It was dug at the behest of King Offa of the Mercians. And he had that dug in around 780 AD. It would have marked the border between Wales and King Offa's Kingdom of Mercia. We go on about Mercia a lot here on the channel. That's because the River Mersey near my house used to be the ancient border between Mercia and Northumbria and then it became the border between Cheshire and Lancashire. Interestingly, Offa's Dyke is now solely in Wales. I'm not sure what King Offa would say about that. I'm sure he'd be livid. He was king between 757 and 796 AD. That's when he died. And he was buried in Bedford of all places. There's quite a lot of remains of Offa's Dyke around here so if you like a ditch and a mound of earth you should probably come and visit. But I like my ditches full of water, with a few canal barges in them, 38 metres up. Let's bimble. They 
told you, they told you the news Well, Bimblers, the plan was to cross over the Ponce Caclisti Aqueduct. I even learnt how to pronounce it. But it's closed until March. So we'll have to go round via the road. It takes our lovely Clangockland Canal, 38 metres over the River Dee, which makes it the world's highest aqueduct. And at 307 metres long, it makes it the UK's longest aqueduct. Odd fact, the stonework is held together with mortar, lime, water and ox blood. It's the haemoglobin in the blood. It helps with the stonework freezing and thawing out several times over the winter. It means it doesn't crack. Anyway, I suppose because it's 38 metres up, we've got to go down 38 metres and then come back up again. And the same on the way home. That's Bimble. I suppose if we hadn't had to have come this way I wouldn't be enjoying the views of the aqueduct like I am doing now I'm not pronouncing the name of it again now Well I've heard what they've said Ignored what I read And looked to the bright side So here's to the bad times forgotten So Bimblers, we reach our next scheduled portage. We had a little bit of a detour, 38 metres down, 38 metres back up again. We're going to have to do that on the way back as well. Keep thinking about that. We should have solely been cycling down the Clangockland Canal, or as it would have been known, the Ellesmere Canal, the bit that we've been cycling down, should actually have been called the Ellesmere Canal. It was a canal that was dug between Shrewsbury and the River Severn and the River Mersey to a place called Netherpool. We call it Ellesmere Port these days, named after the canal and Ellesmere in Shropshire, which the canal should have gone through. Who was tasked with completing this giant feat of engineering? Well, it was friend of the channel, Thomas Telford. He's the man that dug the Caledonian Canal and built the Menai Bridge. We've been built to that in the past. He built that big A5 road between London and Holyhead and he also made the suspension bridge in Conway and he also designed Chirk Aqueduct which was where we were a bit ago. Unfortunately the Ellesmere Canal was never completed. It stops here at Trevor Basin. The bit between here and Chester was never dug. So all the other sections of the Ellesmere Canal were given different names. The Shropshire Union Canal the Montgomery Canal and the Clangockland Canal 
we're actually going to cycle down the Clangocklin Canal, the real Clangocklin Canal, not just the Ellesmere Canal given a different name. That's Bimble. Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A mistake that made the distance Or a trying way to live Maybe it's the time that you grabbed at my arms And electricity flowed from my shoulders to palms In a white hot glow leaving white cold scars Left fair and on show just to prove they were ours Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it didn't work at the time Maybe it never did A novelty improvement Left lonely as it gave Maybe it's the time that you close both your eyes And you pouted your lips as you waited for mine In the soft red glow of your soft cold arms Serotonin burns holes through my veins to my heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it's the time that I wanted to say That my limbs won't move more than two feet away From your day glow side luminescent sparks I could burst into flames from one beat from your heart Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is Maybe it worked Maybe it never did Maybe it never was Quite like how it is And I quite like how it is And so, Bimblers, we reach Clangocklan, or as I've been wanting to call it all day, Langollen. I've tried my best, Bimblers, to all my Welsh-speaking brethren. I've tried the pronunciations. I've got them wrote out phonetically and everything. If I've failed, I apologise. Clangocklan is named after another Welsh saint, a 7th century monk that arrived here in a coracle, a man after my own heart. I've always wanted a coracle. If you ask my family, every time they ask me what I want for Christmas, I always say, a coracle, and I never get one. If you know anyone that's selling a cheap coracle, I want it. We're gonna transform this channel. It's gonna be all coracle-based adventures from now on. That seventh century monk went by the name of Saint Cochlan, and he has a church dedicated to him here in Clangocklan. The earliest parts of the church go back to the 1200s, but like most old churches, it was done up in the Victorian era. And it was done up by another fella from Shrewsbury. A fella by the name of Samuel Pountney Smith. He was actually Justice of the Peace for Shrewsbury. And the Conservative Member of Parliament. And the Lord Mayor of Shrewsbury in 1873. Mr Smith, incidentally, 
design the home of Charles Bayer. Do you remember Charles Bayer? As in Bayer Peacock and Company. We spoke about them near Chirk Viaduct. And what was Charles Bayer's house called? Clanticillio Hall, because it was in Clanticillio, just a bit further from here in Clangocklan. You also have here in Clangocklan, Clangocklan Bridge. It's probably the best place for it, given its name. It's listed as one of the seven wonders of Wales. But when I had a look at them, they all seemed to be in North Wales, which made me suspicious. But I found out it's from an old Welsh poem from the late 17th century. I have it wrote down in my big book of Bimble. Pistolish Rider and Wrexham Steeple, Snowdon's Mountain without its people, Overton Yew Trees, St Winifred's Well, we've bimbled there, Clangocklan Bridge and Gresford Bells. In 2021, an artist named Luke Jerram covered the bridge in a patchwork quilt. It was all part of his art installation, Bridges Not Walls. It was covered with 1,000 patches of fabric, all made by members of the public. A lot of them from round here. Luke Jeremy is also famous for his floating earth. We visited that at Salford Keys in one of our bimbles. And he's also famous for his giant moon. You may have seen that at your local art centre. Loads going on here at Clangocklan. And not enough time. They've got a heritage railway. And I can see the remains of an old abbey on top of a hill. We'll have to come back. But for now, I've got to do this whole journey again. Back to church.